Arduino here. We've got some uh, fun time with our final basics project here. This is the uh, analog uh, analog read. We're going to talk about the last kind of core command in Arduino. Because really, at the end of the day, I give you four assignments to look at these four pieces. We've got Blink, which is digital write. We've got digital read, which uses the serial monitor. We just talked about analog writes, so the ability to actually you know program a fader into an LED so it would go from not very bright to quite bright. And now, we're going to actually use an analog input. Now, remember when we did digital inputs, we had the push button, and when you pushed it, it was either a zero or a one. Analog inputs work in a very different way. They're actually going to give us a different number. And so what we're going to do is we're going to do this activity in two parts. We were first going to focus purely on the analog read portion of this. We're going to hook up a potentiometer in real life and in Tinkercad, and we're going to read what happens on that potentiometer when we actually turn the thing. Then we are going to take that code that we just brought in from the potentiometer, and we're going to write it out to one of those fading LEDs that we had from the last activity. Without further ado, Here's your tutorial for analog read, and I'm just going to grab the code here because the code for this is actually pretty much ready to go right in Tinkercad. You'll notice in Tinkercad, I've actually just set up a very simple LED circuit here. That'll be for our second piece, and I have a potentiometer. I'm actually going to hook it up to remind you how the potentiometer works, but first, I'm going to put the code in here. I'm also going to go over to my IDE, and I'm just going to grab a, I have a random sketch floating around here, and I'm going to post the code here so we can talk about it. Now, what this does is it says, on uh, line one, it creates an integer variable called analog pin, and it puts it on pin A3. Now, A3, if we go to Tinkercad, is down here on the analog corner of your board. These are those analog pins we talked about in the last video that are actually proper analog. They actually analyze voltage from zero to five volts in this case, and can give you a very precise value in between those. They're really good for sensors. They're uh, often very good for things like uh, even uh, even sometimes, uh, mostly sensors. I was going to say servos, but PW WM works better with servos. I digress. Let's hop back over to the IDE here and grab that random sketch. We then create a new variable here on line number three, which is going to be called VAL. I'm going to refer to it as value from here on in, and we're going to make it equal to zero. zero. And this is a variable to store the value read. So we're literally going to be grabbing some information off this potentiometer. We're going to dump it in this integer variable so that we can actually store it somewhere. Let's talk about our setup. Setup is easy. Serial begin, 9600, no problems there. Doesn't bother me at all. We'll talk again like we did last time. You may want to put a pin mode in here and actually put your uh, your analog pin as uh, an input. Uh, that depends on if you ever use your analog pins as outputs in other programs. Again, you you know this isn't a bad idea to initialize it. That being said, let's go down to our loop. And our loop is super simple. Two whole commands. We take that value variable that we created and we make it equal to an analog read of pin A3. That's relatively easy, right? We're going to go say, hey, what's happening on A3? Now, I don't know. Let's say I'm, I'm brand new to this. I don't know what this is going to spit out. I know with a push button, because it's digital, it's going to be 0 to 1. But what is this analog read? Is it going to be 0 to 100? Is it going to be 0 to 1,000? What is it going to be? Let's find out, because our last command is simply going to print whatever that number is. Nice and easy. I'm going to take and I'm going to copy this code. Actually, I already have this code in here. And I'm just going to hook up the circuit for this very, very quickly. I'm going to grab my potentiometer, zoom in here. I'm going to put one side to positive, one side to negative. And I'm just going to color these properly so that they uh, do uh, show what they're supposed to. Okay, I'm going to throw my 90 degree angle bends in these. And again, these just make your circuit easier to troubleshoot as we're going along here. And I'm going to pick an arbitrary color for this that this is going to be turquoise. Yay. All right. So the potentiometer, the wiper is now connected to A3, just like the code suggested. It's got a terminal 1, terminal 2 on positive and negative, so there's some voltage flowing through there. Now let's see what happens when I start this simulation. I click here, I open up my serial monitor, and you'll see that I'm actually getting a number right now of 1023. And I know that's a really small, I'll uh, show a bigger version of it with the real life version, but what you can see is that as I turn this, the number is actually going to get smaller. If I stop here, it's at about 489, and I can go all the way down to the other side to get to zero. So you can see that I I can get any number between 0 and 1023, which is awesome. And that's actually how the analog pins work. They will read a number between 0 and 1023. Um, I'm going to do this with my real life breadboard just really quickly here. So those of you that are playing around with your kit can actually uh, test this one out. Okay, uh, I'm going to put it over here. Why don't we? Okay, again, I've got an LED just hooked up here. I was playing with it from a previous activity. I am going to go ahead and take a uh, jumper wire here a long-ish red jumper wire that I can use for uh, my positive voltage. Now, don't worry about the positive versus negative, the left uh, left and right. 
Um, what you're going to find is that, make sure I got that in the right spot, that is indeed in 5 volts. So I put 5 volts on one side of the potentiometer. On the other side of the potentiometer, I'm going to put ground. I'm going to use a green wire for this one. Okay. Now again, I know that some of you guys in your kits have potentiometers that don't quite look like this one. That's okay. All you need to know is that the outside two pins are going to be terminal 1 and 2, and the middle pin is going to be the wiper. And the one that's really important is the wiper. So let's go grab the middle pin, the wiper here. I'm actually going to take this potentiometer because the, the head of it's getting in my way, and I'm just going to spin it around on my board. And there we go. We've got a middle pin on the wiper, and I'm just going to run this right over. I may have picked a, a wire that's just a little bit too short here. Five, four, three. There we go. Okay, so wiper is connected to pin number three. Use my little pointy stick here. There we go. Wiper is connected to pin A3. We've got a positive voltage wire here running into the one side of the potentiometer, and the other side of the potentiometer is running to ground. Easy as that. Now, let's put this thing together and let's upload some code. All right, I'm going to go back over to my IDE here, and I'll just show you what I'm doing here. Okay, grab all of this. Tools. Select my Arduino. It's already selected. Nice. Upload. I have to save this. I'm going to call this analog uh, write. Actually, sorry, this should be analog read. I apologize. Okay, let's save that sketch, and we're going to see the thing upload, and I'm going to jump back over to here. Okay, it uploaded. Life is good. And guess what? This is the most boring board ever, because there's nothing really to see. So I'm going to go to my serial monitor. You can see a whole bunch of zeros right now. If I've hooked it up properly, as I turn it, we should get these numbers. And I am turning the potentiometer right now from one side to the other. And we can see that the numbers are going up and down. Now, this is kind of cool. Remember last time we talked about the serial plotter? This is where the serial plotter can have a lot of fun, actually. So if you have a potentiometer, let's say you've hooked it up to some kind of circuit you want to test the you want to test kind of the angle of things you can actually do the angle here and notice how this has when i move it it actually has a few really like really dotty ups and downs going on here okay sometimes that's electrical interference coming through the wire but often that's just because i'm reading this thing so often it's taking many many thousands of samples per second and uh, that does happen with electrical devices if you want to take less samples put a delay in here easy as that Okay, you can see that at a certain point I am getting a few voltage drops here. I might have a might have a wire that's a little bit loose or something. Anyways, I digress. Now, this means that we've now taken an analog signal, like a potentiometer, and we've turned it into data. We've turned it into a number. And that's awesome. That's so cool. But what could we do with that number? Now, there's a few things we can do. Down the road, I'm hoping that you all get good at doing things like uh, comparison operations where you say, if the potentiometer is between 0 and 10%, then do something. But for right now, we're going to do something even easier. We're just going to straight up take that potentiometer value, and we're going to write it to the LED. So let's hop back over here, and let's put that together. Now, this code is actually the code that is in analog write. Okay, and I'm actually going to grab the analog write code here, and I just want to make sure... Um, okay, I'm going to show you two ways of doing this. I'm going to grab the analog write code. I'm going to paste it into, uh, I'm just going to paste it into a sketch here in Arduino, and I'm going to walk through it. Okay, so first thing we do, we set up a variable okay, called uh, LED pin, and it's on pin 9. Okay, that's cool. I'm just going to take a look at my board here. My board has its LED pin set up on pin number 3. Five, number five. I'm just going to change that variable right there to match my hardware. Okay, we have an analog pin. Okay, the analog pin is going to be on pin A3, just like we just set up, and a value equal to zero. Okay, we create our LED pin. We make it an output. Okay, if we're getting really technical on this one, we could also take our uh, analog pin and we could turn it into an input. Awesome. Let's spell things correctly. Then we go down to our loop, and our loop here is actually just as easy as the last one. Same thing here, we create our value, or we take our value variable, and we make it an analog read of the analog pin. Now we're getting a number between 0 and 1023. On our analog write then, we are going to do something really weird. We're going to analog write, and this means we're sending voltage out to that LED, okay? And we're going to analog write to the LED pin the value divided by 4. And that kind of makes sense when you think about it, because when we did our value, we actually got a value, we wanted, sorry, when we did an analog write, we wanted a number between 0 and 255. What we get on our analog read is a number between 0 and 1023. So by dividing the 1023 by 4, we actually get a number basically that is between 0 and 255. And this is the easiest way to do this right here. Okay. 
I'm going to turn around, I'm going to dump this into Tinkercad to show you what it does. I'm going to dump it into the real life board, show you what it does. I'm just going to paste it here and I'm going to look at my circuit. I've actually got my LED hooked up to pin number six. So I'm just going to go into my variables at the top and I'm just going to change my code to pin number six and I'm going to click start. And now what you're going to see, is this LED is not going to turn on because I, I believe I was at zero at this point, but as I turn the potentiometer, the LED gets brighter and brighter. We're actually grabbing data from this potentiometer down here and we are running it into the LED up here. Here, we're actually applying the data. The Arduino is controlling all of this. Now, could we put this LED on the wiper in a straight line? Yes, we could, but in this case, we're actually converting it to data and then using the data to do something else. This particular example, that's not terribly useful in real world terms, but the concept of how you can turn this into data and then turn the data into something real world as an output is really important. All right, I'm gonna stop this, I'm gonna go to my IDE and I'm gonna show you how this works on a real life board. Um, uh, this is our analog read. I have an analog right here, so let's go with this. Pin 5, I think we talked about, was all there. And I am just going to quickly upload this, and I'm going to show you what it looks like on the actual board. And everybody can see that LED there. I'm just going to bend that LED a little bit out of the way so we can kind of see. It is on right now. So I'm going to grab my potentiometer and see that this LED dims to nothing. And then as I go the other way, it gets brighter and brighter and brighter till it's full brightness. Okay. Um, now, uh, that's not a very bright LED. I probably could do better with something a little bit uh, little bit brighter on this or maybe a smaller resistor, but hey, that's all good. So at the end of the day, that's those four commands are basically the main things you need to know for Arduino. How to do a digital read and a digital write and the difference between those digital commands that can be on or off and the analog read or write, which can be anything in a range in between. With all those things, you can do a lot of what you want to do with an Arduino. What kind of machine are you going to build with it?